Okay, so we're now on page three. So another way we can figure out whether something is a function or not is by looking at a graph of it. And so the thing we're looking for on a graph is that we want to see if it passes the vertical line test, mean, which means for every vertical line, we're only going to intersect the graph at one point. So for example, this is a function. So if I pass a vertical line like my pen through here, I'm just going to touch one point on the graph at a time. This is the same thing as saying that each x value only has one y value. All right, so let's talk about some characteristics of a function. So here's a graph of our function. It's the function g. And we just want to determine some of the following things. All right, so we have g of negative 4. All right, so remember, this is a y value. 4 is the x value that we're plugging in. So we want to look for 4 on the x-axis, and our answer is going to be the y value. Sorry, sorry negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. And the um, y value that goes with it is 1, 2, 3. There. So this is the point negative 4, negative 3. x is negative 4, y is 3. All right, so let's do the same thing and determine g of negative 2, which again is a y value. The, two is, the negative 2 is the x. So right here, so that is at positive 2. So here we have the point negative 2, positive 2. Okay, so the next question says we need to find all the x values, so we want to find all the values down here, such that g of x equals 3. So what do you think? This number 3, what is it? Is it an x value or a y value? g of x, remember that tells us our range, that's the y value. So we're trying to find all of the x values where the y value is 3. So let's find 3. 1, 2, 3 up here. Oh, that happens where x is negative 4. And it also happens where x is 2. So these are the places where g of x is 3. So we found the x values that goes with y equals 3. Now we want to find the x values such that g of x is less than 2. All right, so again, all the y values are less than 2. So let's go ahead and find y equals 2. I'm going to draw a line here just so we know where we're, where we're going, what we're doing. Okay, so we're looking at y values less than 2, so that happens in this space here. So what are the x values that correspond here? So I guess it looks like it starts being less than 2 where x is negative 1 all the way to maybe 1.5. So let's write a little note here. It happens from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1.5. Make sure you agree that the graph is less than 2 on the y-axis between x equals negative 1 and 1.5. Now, can we say that the graph is less than 2 at negative 1? Well, it actually equals 2, and this doesn't say less than or equal to. Also here at 1.5, it's equal to 2. So we don't want to include those endpoints. So I'm going to say not including negative 1 and 1.5. Now if this problem said g of x less than or equal to 2, we would include them. So let's remember our um, interval notation when we want to write all of the x values between negative 1 and 1.5, not including the endpoints. 
we use parentheses. All right, so next I just have restatements of the domain and range of a function. So it's just the collection of numbers that go into a function. All right, and then the range is just the numbers that come out of the function. So remember, domain goes with the x values, range goes with the y values. So question six just says determine the um, domain and range of the function, and then we're going to do the rest of it in a moment. Right, so let's start with the domain. So remember, these are all of the x values that goes into the function. And if we're looking at this graph, it's all the x values on the graph. All right, so x values, it looks like we're going from negative 4 to 3. Now are we going to include those endpoints? Well, we have closed dots here, so we will. So we're going to use a bracket. So the, the domain of our function on our graph is from negative 4 to 3. So these are all the x values on our graph. The range, well, those are going to be all of the y values on the graph. Well, let's look here. What's the biggest y value we have and what's the smallest y value we have? So smallest y value, it looks like 1. And the biggest is y equals 3. So we're going to go from 1 to 3. And we're also including the endpoints. So we found the domain and range. Okay, so the next part of this question says, then determine intervals where the graph is increasing, decreasing, or constant. All right, so we have to know how to read graphs. We read left to right, just like with words. So when we read from left to right, what is the graph doing? Well, it's going down, then constant, down, up, and down. So when we look for where the function is increasing, it's just where is this function going up? Only here and we talk about the y values it corresponds to. So it, go, it goes up between y value 1 and y value 2, so between 1 and 2. So our graph is increasing between 1 and 2. And so for increasing, decreasing, and constant, we always use open intervals. All right, now let's look at decreasing. So where is our function going down? So again, reading from left to right, oh, it's going down here between x equals negative 4 and 3. Sorry, negative 4 and negative 3. So I'm going to write that down. Then it's also decreasing here. That's between negative 1 and positive 1. So I'm going to put this union symbol, that means and. And also, it is decreasing from x equals 2 to 3. And then finally, that straight line on our graph is where it's constant. So here, this is where our graph is constant, so that's between negative 3 and negative 1.